involved with the campaign with 262. And um, a 262, I think, was a brilliant piece of legislation in its simplicity. It's a very small, it's a very short piece of legislation. Um, and it went through the House, got through the House, gets to the Senate, gets through the first couple of stages at the Senate. All of a sudden, the clock is ticking, and a handful of senators decide that they're going to essentially filibuster the agenda so that 262 never can come up for third reading. So third final reading in the Senate would take five minutes, um, and then it's considered law. And they managed for the last couple weeks of the Senate to basically play with the agenda so that it could never come up for that five minutes. And then, oh, look, the Senate ran out of time. We're rising for the summer, and there's going to be an election. So um, it dies on the order paper. I think it was a fantastic abuse of democracy. Um, I think that uh, I think that a political science student could do their PhD on how that actually constitutes a constitutional crisis. I mean, I think it's outrageous that you had a motion in the House of Commons where that was passed by consensus. The Conservative Party members also supported it that urged the Senate to pass 262 and get it back to the House. So that's going on in the elected House. And in the unelected House, you have like about five senators ensuring that the agenda gets played with so it can't come up. I mean, it's a travesty. Uh, and I think that, I think they should be ashamed of themselves. I mean, I think it's, I think it's just, I think it's repugnant what happened there. Um, I think that going forward, so we have, I guess, all the political parties with the exception of the conservatives saying that they would do legislation in a new government. At the time that, the, the day that the House, the Senate was breaking um, for the summer, the House leader, the government leader in the House, in the Senate, uh, Senator Harder, did say on behalf of the Prime Minister, he'd been instructed to say that if the Liberals form the next election, form the next government, that they would uh, reintroduce government legislation, um, which is a good thing because, in fact, really what, what led to 262's downfall in a way is that it was a private member's bill, and private member's bills don't have the same protection in the Senate. For government legislation, a handful of senators can't do that. They can't, they can't pull that filibuster move, but they can to private members' bills. So, the, you know, there was a commitment made. Um, I, I'm going to have the faith to hold people to their word that if we have a liberal government in any way, shape, or form, that that will happen. Um, I, I think that if we have a conservative government, um, it absolutely will not happen. Uh, and, and that's a loss. It's a tremendous loss. Um, I mean, and it's not, you know, come on, there's no turning the clock back. It's, it's in federal laws. It's being used by the courts. It's being used by human rights tribunals. Indigenous governments are using it in their own, uh, both legal and policy work. I mean, it's, there's no returning it back and saying we have no UN declaration. So not having an implementation plan, which is essentially what 262 was, is ridiculousness. Canada made a commitment at the United Nations, as did all states at the UN, um, to implement the UN declaration. So having a legislative framework to do that job, which is what 262 was. 262 was to create a legislative framework for the implementation of the declaration. Um, and not having that is, is just a huge waste.